start in one one area, excel in that area, then you can think about expanding, scaling, or differentiating. Obviously, have something a differing factor about your business. You don't want to be like everyone else, whether it's sure. just the quality or the customer care kind of thing. But don't go over the top. Specialize. That's a much quicker road to the top. All right, Kaylee, welcome to the show. Thanks, Hi. I'm super excited to have you. you. Know you're one of the busiest people that I know because you're all over the place. I don't know. Last time I spoke, you were in Mexico, living the life. I don't know where you are today. So I actually just got to Austin, Texas, last night. Oh my gosh! So how long are you going to be here? Well, in Austin, I bought a one way like normal. I think maybe one to two weeks. Got it. So tell me about this, this entrepreneurial journey where you actually can pick up and go from places to place, yet run a very successful business all at the same time without missing a beat. What is the secret? The secret? I have to go back to the origin story. And I was in a very uncomfortable position with my last job. And I thought, I'm scarred. I can never work for anyone again. I have to work for myself. I have to start my own business. It's awesome. What are all these people doing when they're in Bali and Thailand? And what are they doing? I can, if they can do it, I can too. I rolled up my sleeves and I started doing my research about what I could do. And I thought, I'm going to start an agency. But I wanted to start something that would keep me engaged because I think today we're talking about short attention span. Yes. And I just... I won't apply myself if I'm not invested or engaged in the activity that I'm doing. And so I chose animation. And animation is so fun because you can make the impossible possible and put whatever you can imagine onto the screen. And so that's what I did with this animation studio is that I knew I wanted freedom. I wanted more quality of life. And so yep. I happened by just taking one step at a time and taking action. Fast forward to a few years later and yeah, I made it happen. Now I'm just looking to scale and even bring more quality of life. What would that look like? What would be the next level for you? Oh, in the nature of being an entrepreneur, it's a roller coaster. Um, yes, I'd love to have a little bit more stability, shifting business models that are more recurring revenue rather than, oh, cool. I just one. got a big deal. I'm so excited. And yeah. Then so more I love that. I love peace and stability. It frees up. And I'm not one of those people who doesn't want to work. I like working. It's fun. It gives me purpose. But I also like to have plenty of time to do all the other things I love to try because I'm a multi-passionate. And that's actually what makes me succeed in business is when I do have balance in my life. I don't know if I have much balance. So this is good that we're having this conversation because... Yesterday, my shirt was Hustle Harder, and today, it's <laughs> just a, a quick egg shirt. And you're, you're very different from most entrepreneurs because because I don't think you buy into the hustle, lifestyle, culture, work until your eyes are red. Tell me more about that, Keely, because I've found this to be very unique, just the way you live and the way you work. Yeah, so I do go back to why I did start this, and it wasn't to be a millionaire or anything. It was for better quality of life. And so I have to remember that to stay comfortable and stay, stay true to myself. We talk about working till our eyes go red. Gosh, I forgot to put them on. I just <laughs> but I had lost my blue light. Blue, blue light, yeah. Got, got a new pair in. And because, so recently I went to Norway for a retreat. Yeah. And it was a breathwork retreat, but it was also all about optimizing your nervous system. And my nervous system is super sensitive, sound, sight, overworking. Just the way that Western culture lives is very taxing. I'm not even talking about the drinking or the things that feel like obviously unhealthy. I'm talking sure. about the screens and maybe you think you're relaxing watching TV, but if, when you're watching a movie, every second is a new picture. Yeah. It's really I know. for your nervous system. It puts you in a state of danger. 
So you're there thinking that you're relaxing, but you're actually like causing such a state of unrest in your body and it messes up your whole system. So I really love to find ways to optimize my nervous system. I like to do breath work. It's just completely transformative. I never realized how changing the state of your body in such a simple way, letting all the breath get all to your cells, you can feel different emotions that you've controlled or suppressed. And it gives me such a state of calm. It's great for creativity, peace. So I love all my little tools. I, I don't want to overwork, but I do like to work. I do like to have purpose. I'd like to make an impact, but I also am very set in my ways. For example, I don't start, I don't open the computer until I've done some sort of a routine that's grounding. Wow. Well, some morning, this morning, I put on some music and I was shaking up and down we're the only mammal that doesn't shake all the other animals are shaking and but it's very stabilizing for them but we're gonna look crazy if we go there shaking like this <laughs> but, but try it sometime and it's very calming so i did a little bit of that this morning a little bit of random weights and dancing and then i was it's ready fun. to start my day to read this from a book or something the retreat that I went to taught me a lot of tools, but I'm always like reading different books and doing different things. Like I'm a sponge, so I love trying different things. No, dude, I feel make me feel more me. Actually, no, I, I love it. I think a lot of people do what you said. They go off on a journey to start a business because they didn't like the life, yet they find themselves working harder, making less money. So they're like, hey, wait, 18 hours of work for less pay than what I was getting for eight. This doesn't make any sense. And I think that could be really bad, right? So like you're finding out that, hey, there is a way to balance and still live the life that you want. Give you, I give you a lot of kudos on that because I do see your posts where you're having a yoga session and, and on the beach in Mexico. And I'm like, come on, this is, this is not real. Was Oh, this is not real. What do you mean? Like, I can't do that. So anyway, kudos on living the life. I wanted to ask you more on the marketing side, right? You work with a lot of business owners, a lot of entrepreneurs. You've worked with SaaS companies. We've done stuff like that together where you're always pitching. And so you see their business from a different light, different lens. What do you think is the biggest mistake business owners, entrepreneurs, SaaS founders, anyone that's trying to build an audience because you're working in video. What is the biggest mistake that they make when they're trying to scale their business? So two things come to mind. The first is that they think about what they want and what they think is a good idea and what they want to do instead of reverse engineering and thinking about their audience. That's a big one. I do the same thing. Of course, I want to do what I want to do. You learn that you have to take a different approach. And then secondly, also victim, also guilty. Me too. Victim. The second thing is that shiny new object. You want to try all these different things. Oh, maybe this yeah. is going to be the thing that is the unlock. It could be, or this one, or that one. So now yeah. you're not actually going 100% in any of them. So it's tough in this digital world too, because you... You even put something out into the universe, then you start getting all these ads for it. So you think, oh, I got to do this one out, but you just invested in this thing. And, you know, it, and then you end up in the same spot because you didn't pick something and stick with it. I love it. I agree with you. Good science. It has to be more of like consistency and getting in front of the right people. So pick one avenue and do it really well before going all over the place. And again, guilty. I'm not preaching <laughs> like I'm. I think you bring up a pretty important point with that shiny object. And the reason is that we feel like what we're doing isn't going to get us where we're trying to go so that we must have this other, you know what I mean? Other program, other tools or other whatever. And so we are really like glued to the ads in our Facebook feed or our Instagram feed thinking that ad is what I need. And then we end up going through a whole lot of time wasted because we were probably on the right track. You were close. My coach always says, Solomon, you have no idea how close you are. I'm like, but I don't feel it. <laughs> so, the, you guys. 
it's it, never good enough. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what leads us to that space where we feel like, hey, I need to check out that program. I want to know what they do. I want to know how much it is. And we just waste our time. Any advice for any entrepreneurs that are struggling, just like you, you said it and I do the same. We all have that worry or fear. Any advice that you can give? So recently I was asked by a friend if I had any advice to give his friend about, I think a lot of entrepreneurs right now are going through a hard time. There's a perceived recession. And so sales for kind of individual companies and creative studios like my own. Yeah. We're going through a little bit of a hard time roller coaster. Yes. And so many comp like fellow people like me I've spoken to and they're concerned. And so I was asked advice. What can I tell my friend? She's she's really struggling. And when I it was interesting because it was so easy for me to give advice to this other person that I was thinking, wow, I should listen to my own advice. Oh, was it advice? It gave me excited. It. So it was just believe in yourself. And it sounds cheesy, but like I started the business and racked up a bunch of credit card debt because I didn't want to ask anyone for help. And I believed there was no doubt I would make the money back and then some. So mm. by living off of the credit card, during that time, I was believing in myself. I had no doubt. So even though I started the business in 2020, I wasn't making any money. I got free healthcare that year. And now things are in this weird place as well. And I'm thinking, be patient. You have an amazing business. You do amazing work. There's no reason that you won't succeed. Now, if you're thinking over there that you won't succeed, you won't succeed. So trust in yourself and know that it might not be overnight, but you can do it. And you never know who you might meet. That one big deal that's just randomly sets you up for the whole year. Just trust in yourself and keep going. When you don't and assume that everything's going to go to shit, that's when it does. No, I think that's amazing advice. And I've seen you over the years. Trust me, I've seen you. I don't remember when we met, but it's been a while. And you've certainly grown the business. And I didn't know that that's how you started. But I've seen you. The work is absolutely amazing. How did you know video was your thing? I loved the idea of when I decided, okay, I think an agency is approachable to start because of my past experience. But I was too bored to do something like Facebook ads or something more dry, numerical or things like that. And so... I saw that animation and animated videos were trending and I thought it was so exciting because I've always loved to creative and I don't even know if I said that in proper English. I'm such a good writer. So I've always loved creative writing and that's what I'm doing. So I get the challenge for the business. I understand. Yeah. I talk to the founder. I listen to those undertones. And then like my mind just opens up into this unlimited world of potential. And I can visualize something that doesn't exist. Like right now, we're working on a cool brand video for a design firm. They make apps and websites. But their brand is cyberpunk and very yeah. modern and sleek. And so we have this one scene that's super cool. So here's a human hand and here's a robot hand. And they're doing like the Michelangelo. Wow. And then there's <laughs> this grid, this grid that comes up and it's animated. So it's the man and machine connection and kind of cool things like that. You can't film that very well, maybe if you have a ginormous budget, but that's what's really amazing about animation. It's so fun. And I think that animation is super impactful. It has a way of evoking emotions more deliberately and abstractly than, say, filming filming something. A funny example a joke is that I just got off a call with Phoenix Children's. It's a kind of medical enterprise more than just a hospital. And they wanted to have an educational video on colonoscopy process. Wow. And uh, oh, what a great example of why animation works great. I because agree. We don't I don't want to see the real. <laughs> I don't even want to see it. <laughs> Unless it's animated. 
Let me ask you this. We had a brief discussion in the past because I, I reached out to you about shorts, how short form content is blowing up. What are your thoughts? What should entrepreneurs do? And are you doing shorts, animated shorts? Because as like, you talked about attention span. So tell me more. Yeah. So as we all know, the attention span, what? I'm just kidding. <laughs> the uh, attention spans are so bad these days. And People are just glued to their phone. They want to see, like, they're scrolling to the next video before they're finished the last one. And not because yes. they don't like the video they're watching. It's because the brain is, like, breathing more dopamine. They don't even yes. really want to skip to the next, but it's compulsive. And with you running a business and you're not showing up in that way for your people, you're just missing out. So yeah, we, we sell animated reels. We can do, it doesn't make sense just to do one. You need to have kind of a strategy behind it. So we sell packages. We can have just a whole bunch of them. Nice, really on brand. A step above just going on one of those Canva or whatever yeah. AI automated. That was my of- next question. That was my, let's finish your thought. I do want to chat about that real quick. So yeah, we do, we have the capability to do all types of animation, whatever you need, you name it, but definitely we're doing selling packages of these nice animated reels. We can change the sizes for different platforms, Amazon, all that jazz. And then as for our short form, we are offering that premium Alex Hormozy style as well. If you want to, again, not use the, AI version of that. I was going to ask you that next. Tell me more about, are you worried about that? Or are you playing around with apps that creating videos and especially animation? I don't know if you're keeping up with Adobe Firefly and all this super, I don't know, like giant companies coming out with things. What are your thoughts and what are you seeing? Yeah. So it is a little bit alarming for being in the space of animation. As much as I'd like to say, because right now, cool, you got an animated video. It looks like shit. Um, I hear you. Congratulations. You're not the type of people we work with, for example. If they're going to tell me, look what it did. Great. If that works for your business, great. But I can't say with full confidence that in one year, two years, that yeah. my business will not be replaced. And look at ChatGP. It's pretty amazing. A few years ago, I wouldn't think it would be that good. So I have to keep my finger on the pulse and Mm -hmm. animation might be extinct. I don't know. Maybe there's just, maybe they'll get some algorithm where they can actually recreate some of this really handmade feel. You'll always need that creative director to direct AI in such a way. But I'm very aware that my business, they need, might not be super have a lot of longevity if I keep it the way it is. I actually have been, I've decided to jump more into live action as well as a way. I think there was a time in January where I wanted to do all of this kind of innovative new service offering. I caveat that. But I realized after this optimizing my nervous system retreat is that I need to simplify I don't need to be the innovator in that type of way. I can innovate in a way that's sustainable and true to myself. And so the idea I got was to do some live action because think maybe in two years, animation trickles off, but what's going to replace the person behind the camera and real video production? I don't think that one we need to worry about for, at least for the time that I'm working. I'm going to retire soon. No, I'm joking. But yeah, so that's my way actually of innovating. It's true. Because think about it. You innovate something with these shorts and all of this. You spend all this time and energy. But what does it look like one year from now? Then you're innovating again and again. You're constantly chasing. And I don't know. I feel like I don't want to be the chaser anymore. I want to be the attractor. I love it. Yeah, I do. I am keeping it a little bit tab on the AI and video and anything with generative AI. I think this space is going to get really crazy. I think it's for the better. 
because I think you and I are, maybe we got to put ourselves in the one that makes the prompt because the creation might be done by a computer, but you, yeah. like you said, somebody still need to give the prompt. What is it that you want? Like the example that you gave. So I feel like that is where the value is. That idea of yours, where you just think about it and your infinite intelligence gives you all these uh, ideas from your creative writing background. That, I don't think it's going to go away. Does that right. make sense? Yeah. From that I point. Saw, I saw a joke. It was a meme. Um, and it said, don't worry, graphic designers. Your jobs are not going to be taken by robots because people will actually have to say what it is that they want. <laughs> yeah. The whole joke. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Any final thoughts, Keely, for somebody who is starting today? in the creative business, even if they're an agency running marketing campaigns or doing websites or one-off projects like what you're doing? I'd say start in one, one area, excel in that area. Then you could think about expanding, scaling, or differentiating. Obviously have something, a differing factor about your business. You don't want to be like everyone else, whether it's sure. the quality or the customer care kind of thing. but don't go over the top, specialize. That's a much quicker road to the top than I think a lot of people are starting agencies and they buy a course online and they're another agency that sells SEO, Facebook. Pick one, pick one and be the best at that. That's what I love. That. Pick I'm one main strategy, one to two strategies that work really well that complement each other networking there's a lot of cold outreach and everything like that i did a i took inventory of how i got all my last clients for the last two years and i've done a lot of cold outreach and the amount that have come from that is just it's embarrassing and mm. it just shows well okay there you go don't spend as much time and energy in that spend more time in the agency partnerships Spend more time in the referrals from complimentary studios and people who provide services to my target people. So Love that. think more about the, we're humans and we're all connected. Think more about that. If you, Love that. It's all about being connected and people remembering you and having that authentic relationship. And it's just not going to happen anymore with, I think LinkedIn outreach had its time and it was amazing. But I think that one has fell off the wagon of it's time to send people to that. You don't know what's real anymore. You don't know if it's automated. You don't know if they really care to meet you or you're on a list made yeah. by LinkedIn Navigator. So you don't know. Amazing conversation. Thank you so much, Keely, for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Thanks for listening to my spiels. I get excited and then I just I go off. No worries. All right, we'll catch you next time.